Hey there everybody and welcome back to the Pike Homestead. So I'm out here on this pre previously existing garden plot here today because you know this is, this is where we planted the wheat in one section and the rest of it hasn't been used yet so I'm gonna get that set up. Uh, I'm gonna till it again today, uh, get it all ready to get some of our starts in uh, and I may start tilling some of the other parts of our yard close to the house here where we want to get some plants going just because you know like we're kind of following suggestions of individuals like Justin Rhodes and everything like that to put it right outside your door so you can't really ignore it. Um, so that's what we're going to do as we get started here. Uh, and I just wanted to touch base on, on one little thing here. So as, as you see in that clip that I, uh, that I put up, there's uh, a lot of dandelions here. Um, so they've all just popped up since it's been tilled. Uh, we've got some other things growing in there as well, but, uh, but I wanted to touch base on the dandelions because uh, they get a pretty bad rap for what they, for what they are. Um, and they are actually fairly beneficial for your soil. Uh, so some of the things they do with their, their deep roots and everything is, is they kind of break up and aerate the soil with their root systems, as well as with their deep tap root, they actually can pull up other nutrients like calcium and stuff from deep down and make it available to the other plants around them. So they're actually very beneficial to have in your garden. Um, you know, and, and they give you a good idea, like these ones, are, they're growing like crazy, so the soil's in good shape. Uh, so I'm just gonna till them up. Um, and make all those nutrients available to the other plants here uh, as we as we sow them in. So I'm going to get that set up and get the rows kind of going for uh, for the garden here. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to go break out the tiller and uh, and we'll get started. That went pretty well. Um, you know, it's already been tilled up once. Uh, I would run it through when I first got the tiller just to kind of practice and figure out how it works. Uh, but next, I've got to start building the rows that we're going to be planting in. Um, so I kind of want to follow what we're going to be doing uh, once we get to the bigger field in a couple of years, just to establish it, work it out, make it working, you know. Um, and so we're going to follow kind of the, the market gardener kind of layout where we're going to have uh, 30 inch rows with an 18 inch pathway in between. So each row will be about four feet wide all told uh, <clears throat> from pathway to the end of the row. And that gives you plenty of room to get wheelbarrows and stuff down if you need it. I mean, we're not gonna be that big, so uh, I don't think we'll need a lot of that, but come harvest time, who knows, right? So you're gonna do that. And then it, it also allows you to be able to reach over from either side and, and access the entire row for, for watering, for weeding, for printing. Like it's, it's just easy. Um, it's a good size and, and a lot of the tools, a lot of the, the equipment that you use for it, whether, you know, we're not going to be using them this year, but if we get, you know, uh, weed barriers or anything like that, a lot of the times they're coming in, in 30 or 48 inch uh, kind of widths. Uh, so it's, it's makes it just easier to work with. Uh, so I'm going to be doing that, um, but we're going to be using some of the tools here. Now, when you buy, you know, new shovels and rakes and stuff like that, the shaft is laminated, right? Like you've, you've got this coating on it. Um, and I've heard that that gives you, you know, that that's what a cause of a lot of the blisters are. Whereas if you have just wood, it doesn't give you as many blisters on your hands when you're working a lot with these tools. Uh, so one of the things I've learned is you just need some sandpaper and you just kind of give it a rough scrape to kind of take off that covering and it will be nicer on your hands long term. So you can do that and we're going to get work in here. So while I'm doing this, I just kind of want to talk a little bit more about the dandelions, right? So they grow really fast. They're some of the first flowering uh, plants that you see, and that makes them uh, actually a great source of food for the first bees out. So your mason bees, your your carpenter bees, your, your wild bees basically, all come out once the dandelions are blooming. And we have a few going now. So you know, it means pollinators are out. Um, that's a food source for them. So it's another reason to keep them. Um, and then, you know, 
A lot of people don't like them though, they don't like them in their yards, they don't like how, you know, they make it look messy or whatever, even though, you know, they're perfect for kids. Uh, the kids all love them, whether they're just blooming or whether they've gone to seed, they're just a lot of fun for the kids. But, if you want to get rid of them, uh, you don't need to use pesticides or herbicides or anything like that, but they're really harmful for the environment and all the creatures that come in your garden and in your yard. Uh, all you really need is actually do less work. And what I mean by that is, just like any other plant, they thrive on sunlight. So, how do you deprive them of that? You stop taking care of your lawn for a couple of weeks. You do a little less work, let your grass get up to three or four inches, and they'll block out the sunlight from the dandelions and they will stop growing. Uh, and once they're dead, they're dead. So, you know, it's uh, it's a great way to let them go, and you have to do a little less work so your yard looks a little bit messier for a few weeks. Um, for me, that's, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, you know, again, I'm not one who minds having dandelion flowers floating around um, in our yard, and in fact, we're going to be tearing up most of our yard here to make into the garden, so it's, it's not a big deal for us. But um, where they are blooming, I'm happy to let them go, because again, we're growing food, and one way, one thing you need for that is pollinators, and that is a draw for them. But, you know, just little tips and tricks that I've, I've learned and figured out over the years. Uh, the best way to deal with invasive weeds or anything like that in your garden is to plant in such a way that they don't get to the sunlight. Um, and that's one of the things we want to be doing here is we want to be planting our crops in such a way that they are uh, creating a canopy, basically, that the weeds can't live underneath once they get tall enough. Uh, so it means, you know, it's, it's more intensive weeding at the start, but after a couple of weeks, once they hit that, you know, three, four inch height, you don't need to worry about pulling out weeds anymore because there's no sunlight to make them grow. And uh, that's really what we what we want to be doing to make it, you know, less kind of less kind of work intensive, really, uh, in the long run. And uh, you know, there's other things you can do uh, as far as you know, like you can use weed barriers, or you can start using like a Hugo culture mound or something like that, where you're you're putting layers of wood and straw and cardboard and other stuff to break down and feed your garden and have it growing on top of that as it and as it decays it feeds your garden but it also blocks out the weeds that are already in the soil um, doing things like killing will have you know the unfortunate side effect that you'll get more weeds at some point um, because the deeper you till the more seeds that are down there in the soil you get to pull up and expose to water and sunlight and uh, and they will start to grow but again if you're you know, conscientious at the start is just a little bit more work at the beginning and then after a week or two you don't have to do as much um, especially if you're doing like like we are we're doing the crop garden method here where you know it's all on the ground it's you know large quantities of crops in fairly tight spacing so you know um, so you want it so that the leaves are kind of touching each other or, or even overlapping just a little bit when they're when they're growing to uh, to create that shady canopy underneath, and you'll see that there are no weeds under there once they get to that height. Um, so it's just a way to you know like it's it's a lot of work at the start, it's a lot of work at the finish, and then in the middle, it's just making sure they're getting enough water. And uh, and a simple way to check that is just stick your finger in. Um, if you've got nothing coming out on your finger, your soil is too dry. If you're getting clumps of mud on your finger, it's too wet. What you want to do is just get a little bit stick into your finger that's kind of moist. And that will tell you whether or not you need to water. Um, and really what you need is no more than about, what, it's, it's I, once the crops are established, it's about an inch of water a week per plant as a rough guideline. Um, so you're only having to water once or twice a week, um, and not if it rains. Uh, so it's, it's a great way to grow a lot of food without a lot of effort once you get it established. So the biggest, heaviest part is starting the garden. And once you get that done, it, it gets easier as it goes. And year after year, the more you do it and the more you keep going, like as we go, we want to be doing minimal till here. So I don't want to be breaking up the soil every year. I want to be, you know, maybe adding in some, some mulch or adding in some uh, compost and stuff on the top 
and just doing like a light harrow or something like that to kind of mix it in. And other than that, you know, like maybe broad forking where you're just doing every couple of feet, but you're leaving most of the soil structure intact that, you know, supplies and feeds and gives you healthy plants. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, healthy soil gives you healthier plants. So if we're not fertilizing with chemical fertilizers and we're not tilling up the soil every year, we're going to have a healthier, happier, more abundant garden in the long term. It just means that at the beginning, it might not be as good. Um, I think here we're probably going to see a pretty good crop this year just because the soil itself here is so good to begin with um, and it's going to be next year that we're going to see more problems with weeds and everything after all the all we've done all the work we're doing this year and see what happens um, and it might be a little bit more of a struggle next year but then the year after that it'll get better and the year after that it'll get better um, because we want to be establishing permanent deep beds here that I'm not you know really disrupting each year so using again using something like a broad fork where it goes down and just kind of cracks open the soil a little bit, doesn't do major disruption to like the mycelial networks and the, uh, the nematode and worm growth and, and their pathways and everything like that that's in the soil and established and helps share those nutrients around. You keep that intact and your garden will grow better. Um, but it still needs air, right, to help with that. So that's why you use something like a broad fork which is minimal impact on the actual structure of the soil it's just you know every two feet or so you're cracking it open and getting some air down in there and that helps aerate the soil and bring more life and more abundant growth um, anyway but that's for the future and I'm just gonna get started on establishing my rows here so basically the first thing I need to do is just to set my kind of boundaries here for what we want where so I've got all these uh, rebar rods that I can use to pound into the soil and uh, just go, uh, go from there. So that's the first row. So I'll be going in with my shovel and just kind of putting it over this way. Um, and then so 30 inches over, I will put in my next set. And now that this is set up, it's really easy to just hop them over. So once you get that row done, right, once you get that pathway done, I just pick up the two on this side and just put them over to the next point here, 18 inches this way, and move it over on the far side, and then we've still got two rows, and we just skip this one further over each time. And it goes nice and easy. So I'm going to keep going with that. Uh, tools I'm using, I'm using a flat-bladed shovel for this. I've also got my hard rake for helping shape it. But the flat bladed shovel should give me a good level kind of work level kind of room here for the pathway and then i just put the soil in to where we want the mound to be so you get deeper soil and it's all set up nice and easy So that's as far as I've gotten today. I haven't got the entire plot done, but uh, got you know six rows completed. Started on the seventh, and uh, probably got room for eight, which is fantastic. Uh, we can get a lot of plants in here and uh, do some good, uh, get some good growing starting. Because uh, yeah, we've got some starts that we need to get in, and we're coming up to the point where we've got to pretty much get everything in to get it to grow before we hit our frost date in the fall. What are you thinking, Ruby Dog? You're thinking this looks like it's fantastic to dig up, aren't you? Yeah. No digging up my like Yeah. Yeah. 
Hey, just one last little tidbit for this video here. Uh, if you may recall when I was attempting to till up that uh, patch of thistles over in the fields and having trouble with it, I started asking about um, whether you, well, what, what we could do for the fields. Well, I did come up with an answer that I didn't actually give. It wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't, you know, pigs or anything like that or buying a tractor or anything. Um, it was actually community support. So I wanted to make a big, you know, mention about this because uh, since we've lived here, I've been helping out uh, the next farm down the, down the road with their cattle. And so I've put in, you know, a good number of hours there. And one of the reasons is because they have the equipment to do things like this. So if you recall from the video earlier, you'd see shots, this was all grass. And just after I finished up with, uh, with tilling the garden patch, which is actually right over there, and getting the rows ready, uh, our neighbor showed up. He'd been promising to try to get over here uh, sometime this week, and, and he showed up and said, oh, I'm just going to go get the tractor and show me where you want to want to till it up. And so he came in and did a few passes and broke up the soil for us, and he'll come back again in a couple of days and, and do it all over again uh, once all the grass has died. And uh, and so that's fantastic. Like it's, it's all about building and being a part of the community you're in as well, because you can't homestead on your own. Um, you know, it's it's always something from the neighbors or something from the community that can help you out and you in turn give back. Uh, and it's it's a very important tenet that I think uh, we're, we're really trying to establish here. And so far, so good. Um, this is not, you know, this is a lot of backbreaking labor taken off my shoulders just by spending some time playing around, helping them push around their cattle, which is actually, I find it a lot of fun. Um, interesting challenge in learning how to deal with them and everything like that. And it's all been just learning and fun for me and it's getting us, you know, things like this and, and, you know, other cattle on the farm to help keep the rest of the grass down and, and things like that. So, uh, it's really important to be part of and giving to and, and in turn getting back from your community. So that's, you know, going to be our plan for when we get to the big field over here, that's going to be our plan there, uh, is, you know, help out the people who have the machinery and you know they'll donate their time and everything so they'll when they get their uh, get their really big tilling equipment set up next month they're gonna swing by it's just one of those things where they can't do it right now because they've been just in the middle of cleaning up calving season so that's coming to an end now um, and so they're gonna be helping and, and we can start prepping that field for next year um, anyway so yeah thanks for spending the time and uh, yeah enjoy your day